Hey there, what's up? Pat McGee here. Um, I just thought I could take a quick second and sort of share um, my very basic guitar knowledge with uh, anyone out there who wants to hear, especially those in the military who we've had the fortunate opportunity to play over in Greenland, to play throughout the Middle East and Africa, uh, Djibouti, Bahrain. Um, we've been some really amazing places and, you know, nothing ever is gonna top landing on the Eisenhower and performing for uh, the Navy out there. Uh, just incredible, Navy Entertainment took us there and it was, I mean, I don't have a story in my life that's cooler than that. And you guys live that every day. So um, thank you so much for your service. I know people always say that, but the perspective I have of being out there and seeing where you guys are and you and you women are day after day, it's mind blowing. So um, it puts my life a uh, whole new meaning for me. And playing guitar is even uh, quite a luxury. Um, so listen, I don't care if you just learned how to play a G, a C, a D, whatever. Um, I started off playing cover songs. I'm not the guy to teach you how to play covers. The internet is loaded with that. But <clears throat> I prefer to write my own music. Um, and it can be as simple, uh, it, the simpler the better, to be honest with you. Don't ever think that you're trying to rip off somebody else. That's a bad thing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with um, channeling people that you've loved. Um, I'm a big Jackson Brown, James Taylor, Eagles, um, even, uh, Grateful Dead, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Um, but I also love Metallica. I love um, Van Halen. Um, but I just knew that my vocal ability and my general appeal, um, when I would sit down and, and pick up the guitar, what came out of me naturally was more closer to those singer-songwriters. So, that being said, uh, for some reason, open chords have always been a thing for me. Um, I tune the guitar, well this is down a half step. Major E flat, but E major position. Um, e major is probably the only chord that I play that's the proper tuning, the proper fingering. But when you get into things like, um, I love that, that high E, I leave it ringing on the A. So I'm only doing These two notes, second fret for the A. So you got that open E that's, I let it ring all the time. Um, even if I'm playing a B. Say that I got addicted to these picks. I'm not trying to sell you my own pick, which is pretty ridiculous. But um, this three sided pick, I got hooked on it in the late 90s, and I literally cannot play <laughs> with the standard teardrop. Um, <clears throat> I think because I'm always moving it around for acoustic guitar, it's really, it's really special. It gives you a nice strumming thing. Here's another A right up in this position, open E. always really dug the open chords. Um, you can treat that across the board. If you're capoing it, which I, that'll be something else that I would say is definitely something when I started writing music, if I only knew E, B, and A, I would just capo it. Right? Capos are just a great thing to, you know, bring them up here. Play a C and an F. To the G. And then it gets into writing your own music. Taking three chords like that. <clears throat> Let's just say, for instance, we're here. Guess what this is really is? A G. It's just a high G. I 
wrote that in right now. I've never played that in my life. But to sit on a chord and to come up with your own melody. Right? You got yourself a song, and it's your song. You came up with it. Um, all I can say is sit on, find a chord. Let's say we're back in G, on the real position. Right? And you want to write your own song. Think of a, of a, I don't, I'm buddies with the Zach Brown guys. My daughters asked me the other night to play Chicken Fried. I've never played it in my life. But talk about a song that's pretty easy. You know what, I'm a chicken fried. Three chords. Great melody, completely memorable. Um, you can do this type of thing. I know you don't have to be one, a member of the Beatles to write the greatest song ever, um, but I'm always gonna teach someone to sort of dig deep, grab a note in the chords. Na, 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 na. You don't have to be a great singer. I'm the great. I'm the perfect example of that. La 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 la. Na 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 na. Na, 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 na. Don't be afraid to write your own music. That's gonna, I think that's gonna give you the biggest pat on your own back, to be honest with you, if you, uh, rather than figuring out. See, I don't even know how to play that. But um, I just never thought that that's the best use of my time. I've always wanted to write my own music. And um, open chords, Finding melodies within within the chord. Don't be afraid to keep it super simple. Use a capo, and um, you know, with your right hand, the last tip I'll give you is your best friend right here, the palm. Keep it here. You're sort of palming it, right? Nobody wants to play guitar with another dude who's doing this. Unless the part of the song calls for that. But for the most part, lay back. Try not to be fancy. Keep the palm on there. Try and really get an idea of what strings you want to ring out. You don't have to, when you play a G chord, doesn't have to sound like a church tune every time. Right? You can just go. Just play the lower part of it. There's your C. Doesn't have to be this. Nothing wrong with that, but you can make it your own by attacking just portions of the chord. Maybe when you get to the chorus of whatever song you just wrote, you let it ring out. Right? These are just some ideas for you. Become your own songwriter. You can do it. It's not that hard. All right, thank you for your service. And um, if you ever want to know anything about guitars, hit me up, patmcgeeinfo at gmail.com. Pat McGee info at gmail.com. I'm happy to, uh, it's the least I can do is to help you out playing guitar or writing music. Um, you know, I'm inspired by what you guys do. So thank you for uh, taking the time to come check this out. How about this baby? 1951 Gibson. If you find one of these, buy it. Later. Hello, sailors. My name is Jonathan Williams from the Pat McGee Band. And I have been charged with the task of showing you how to tune your acoustic. If, uh, if you 
are just getting into this. This is a standard six string acoustic guitar. It's made of wood, probably looks a lot like yours. And they're made kind of roughly the same way. This thing is very sensitive to temperature. When the temperature changes, so does the tension on the strings. Wood ex expands and contracts, and therefore the tension on these strings will also change. So, first thing you need is a tuner. This is a clip-on tuner, and uh, it's made by Snark. I like it. I don't even know if they make these ones anymore, but the design is very uh, low profile, so I dig it. I'm going to clip this on the end of your headstock. Make sure it's got a good connection. It is seated as much as it can be because it relies on vibration to tell you if it's in tune. As the vibration travels up the neck, it reaches that little device and it will tell you what you need to do. Typically, these tuners have some sort of gauge where in the middle is your target and it will, as you pluck the string, move up and down and tell you if you're below tuning or if you're above tuning. So maybe upwards. If, uh, if it goes over this way, it might be low. If it goes over that way, it's probably high. You want to hit that center mark. So, start with the top E string. Right now, it's telling me that it wants to be an E, but it's not quite one yet. I am below. You want to tune upwards. You want to tune upwards. The reason you want to do that is, is because you want to keep the tension on these tuners. So as you tune up, it keeps the tension on that string. If you were to, to just tune from up down to your target, then you would be lessening the tension on the strings. And after that, the whole guitar just kind of seems to want to follow that way. So you're not going to stay in tune quite as longer as, as, uh, as you would going up. Anyway, tune up to your mark. Let's move on to the A string. That one's low also. Hit the target mark. Let's move on to the D string. That one actually looks pretty good. Let's move to the G string. That one looks good too. Ooh, the B string. Let's get it up to the mark. E string. That looks great too. Now this guitar is in tune. And I'm ready to roll. Hope it helps. Hey, what is up, all my brothers and sisters sailing and flying in the Navy? This is Patrick McAloon from the Pat McGee Band, and uh, we're all putting together some tips and tricks for playing guitar. Whether you're a newbie or whether you've been doing it for a long time, some of these things are uh, old news, some of it might be something new to you. Um, I'm going to talk to you about capos because I'm the guy in the band who's always moving stuff around. Capos, for those of you who don't know, are these guys. I've got them all clipped on my headstock because my guy looks like a clamp. There's all different kinds. Um, this one is one that I like because I can put it on and on off my guitar real quick. Um, but um, the, the long and short of it is, you know, like let's say you're playing an E chord, right? <laughs> And then you play an F chord, right? And you've got to put your whole finger down there and the bar, right? Same shape, just need your index finger. And it hurts. Whether you've been playing guitar for a minute or forever. F chords, no fun. You know it. If you play, you know it. <laughs> so capo is a really easy and quick way to sort of, you know, move things around, right? Instead of going... put a capo up there and get that same chord without having to put my index finger down. 
right? So that's your basic capo, and uh, you can use it for all sorts of things. You want to change the key of a song if you're a singer, and you need to get it a little higher, a little lower from where you're playing it already. Capo is a great uh, tool for that. But um, one of the ones that I really love to use, especially when I'm creating music, is, uh, is cut capos, um, like this guy right here, if you notice. He's considerably shorter than that guy. Wow, wow, wow. And he's got a hole right there. No hole. Hole. So for those of you who've been playing guitar for a long time, you're probably looking at this going, what is that? Well, um, for me, it's just an inspiration to get alternate tunings and things like that. And let me show you real quick, right? So if I throw it here on the second fret, right? So what I had was standard tuning, right? Sure. And then I throw this on there and my low E is still ringing. I can play behind the capo, uh, but you basically get dad gad. Right? And you can get some really cool voicings, sounds of chords, things that you couldn't get if you were playing a standard tuned guitar, right? So I can play like a chord progression like this. And I get lots of droning sounds. And, you know, especially when you're writing music and creating music, this is a really cool way to get different sounds that you might not get if you're just playing your standard chord shapes. And you just can mess around with it, and you can play behind it. Amuse your guitar playing friends by playing behind the capo. Watch this. So you hear all those drone sounds, it's cool, right? It gives you just a different way a different way of maybe writing a song or creating something that you weren't creating before. And, um, you know, it works better in different parts of the neck, like on the second fret, a cut capo like this, where it just grabs those three strings there. It's only grabbing those three. This one, I can play here. I can play there, but no sound here. See, because they're on the other side of the capo. Cool, right? Um, so, yeah, you know, if you get a chance, the first time I ever did this, I literally took a drill. I took a hacksaw and cut my old capo off, just chopped the tip off of it, and I took a drill and punched right through there to get this. Now, thankfully, I can call my friends at Kaiser, order one, they're great. But, um, you know, my very first capo when I was experimenting with stuff like this, I literally just DIY'd it myself took a hacksaw and had at it. Um, but like I said, these, you know, it works great in some spots, you know, like sounds great on the second fret. Um, you can do some cool stuff on the seventh fret. Always sounds nice too. Right? Because I'm getting that big low E sound. Right? I'm playing my low E because it's hanging through there. So hey, if you got some tools, you want to cut up an extra capo that you have lying around and do some experimenting, give it a shot. Hit us up. It's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Show us, show us what you're doing with some cool cut capos and making cool new sounds. Thank you all so much for, for being there and supporting us back here in the States. And uh, we, we greatly appreciate everything you do. Uh, the Pat McGee Band has been uh, honored to, to head out and play for you guys in the past um, out in the Middle East and Africa. And uh, every chance we get, we're going to support you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I hope that a couple of little capo tricks, uh, you know, help you out. Peace.